Good evening, church, and welcome to our midweek Lenten service. We're going to worship this evening as we prepare the ground for God's spirit and presence to be here before we look into the Word of God. Let's worship together. Baby. 
Beloved, worthy, worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Well, are you ready for the word? Let's take a look at Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter. And I'd like to read from verse 13 uh, down. Luke chapter 12. you have your Bibles, would you turn with me? Verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, 
tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he, that is Jesus, said to him, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over you? And then Jesus said to them, Beware, and be on your guard against every form of greed, for not even when, the, when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. And then he told them a parable saying, The land of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself saying, What shall I do since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you. And now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So is the man who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Well, shall we pray? Father, would you send your Holy Spirit to lead us as we think about your word, help us to understand it and to glean from it nuggets of truth that we can apply in our lives and into our situations. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's look at this passage in a little depth and see what we can take from it or what the Holy Spirit is showing us. Jesus is stopped in the crowd by somebody who says, uh, will you be the arbitrator? Will you help uh, my brother and me to kind of figure out what to do with our inheritance? Or rather, will you tell him, uh, speak to him about it? And Jesus says, man, who made me an arbitrator? I'm not here to judge between you all about your inheritance. Then he turns to the crowd and he seizes a teaching opportunity, as it were. He says, be very careful. Be careful, he says, about envy and greed. Every form of greed, he says, be very careful. Why? Because even when you have lots, your life is not fulfilled. Your life is never fulfilled by a lot of things that you may have in terms of an inheritance or possessions or that the abundance of the things that you have uh, justify living in that sense or your life isn't fulfilled because of what you own so jesus is saying for you to have an abundance of life or to have a life that is meaningful it cannot be filled with possessions what must it be filled with he says it must be filled with god the passion translation puts it like this that this is what will happen to all those who fill up their lives with everything but God. This is what will happen with, with people who fill up their lives with everything but God. Fill up their lives with what? And Jesus says, well, let me tell you a story or let me illustrate it. And so he says, a wealthy landowner had a farm that produced bumper crops. In fact, it was filled his barns to overflowing and he thought, what should I do now that every barn is full and I have nowhere else to store my crops? I know what I'll do. I'll tear down the barns and build one massive barn that will hold all my grain and my goods. Then I can just sit back surrounded with comfort and ease and I'll enjoy my life for, with no worries at all. Drink, eat and be merry. And then God says to him, you fool. What if today your life is required of you, your soul is required of you, that today is the last day of your life? What happens to everything that you have spent so much of your life investing into? Your time, your energy, your potential, your talents, your gifts, all of that, 
went into this particular aspect of your life, but it has no worth because you can't enjoy it. Because today is the day that your soul is being required of you. That's a very, very pertinent question for us even today, isn't it, beloved? In, in the midst of all of this anxiety, so many people are worried. They're worried about their life. They're worried about their health. They're worried about the work. And above all, they're worried about death. Because we're looking at the vast number of people who have died who didn't expect to die, isn't it? They had no clue that this was going to be the end of their lives. And yet it was. Which then brings up a very important question in this context, isn't it, beloved? What are you and I pursuing? The things that we are pursuing, do they have God written all over it? Or do they have just our own selves, our flesh, our joy, what we want to do and enjoy by ourselves? In other words, does it have kingdom value? Jesus would say later in the same passage, in the following verses, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first his kingdom. Well, if you've even begun to consider what the word is instructing us till now, then I imagine that there could be just a little bit of angst or anxiety that's on the peripheral. Because as you think about, okay, if this is the word of God, and maybe I have not pursued God as I ought to have, maybe I have pursued other things, then if I need to make a change right now, then how does it affect everything else in my life? And you're beginning to get a little anxious. I think Jesus understood what would happen because amazingly, if we read on in this passage, he goes on to talk about anxiety. Listen, he says, listen to me. Never let anxiety enter your hearts. Never worry about any of your needs such as food and clothing, for your life is infinitely more than just food or the clothing you wear. And then he says, look at the birds. They are carefree. They don't think about where their next meal is coming from. Look at the lilies in the field, he says. Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And they don't get up in the morning and say, okay, how do I look beautiful? God, the heavenly father, takes care of all of that. And then this beautiful line, very profound, says this, O struggling one with so many doubts. O struggling one with so many doubts. I repeat it. Don't let worry enter your life. Live above the anxious cares about your personal needs. O struggling one with so many doubts. Are you that struggling one with so many doubts this evening? Well, Jesus is speaking directly then to you. And he says, I repeat it, he says, don't let worry enter your life. Live above the anxious cares, above your personal needs. And I wonder this evening, whether the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, you need to make a course alignment. The things that you have pursued don't really have kingdom worth. Remember what Paul said that one day, everything that we have done will be burnt up with fire. And what has been of great use to the kingdom will be preserved. Gold, silver, precious stones. But those that have had no worth will be burnt up as hay, stone and rubble. 
Jesus is saying, Some, nothing that doesn't have God in it is of any use. Is the Spirit of God speaking to you, beloved, and saying, will you bring about a change today? Maybe that's why God has given you these moments. Maybe in isolation, to sit by yourself, to think about things, to think about greater aspects of life and eternity, to think beyond the temporal things that sometimes we can get caught up with. And suddenly, beloved, today, they seem so fleeting. And the permanent outweighs the transient temporal things of life. And God is saying, will you think about your priority? Do you need to make a change in the priorities of your life? Do you need to bring God more into the equation? That's our message this evening. And that's our question. Do you need to reprioritize your life today? My prayer is that you will. O oh, Heavenly Father, saturate your word with your spirit. And Lord, for those who have been convicted by your spirit today to make a course change, Lord, help them to know what to do and how to do it. Don't let another moment go, Master, without them responding to your word. Lord, I pray that you would flood the place that they are in with your spirit, that you would move them to make changes and align with your perfect will for them this evening. In your name, the beautiful name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Beloved, would you receive this benediction? May these words be etched upon your heart. Know that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to its completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.